percent student pass rate 100 percent money back guarantee on some of our products study from the comfort of your home outstanding customer service 30 plus bnf mep and calculation videos 100 plus up-to-date gphc style questions welcome to pre-reg shortcuts the number one pre-reg online training platform with over 85 percent student pass rate 100 percent money back guarantee on some of our products study from the comfort of your home outstanding customer service 30 plus bnf mep and calculation videos 100 plus up-to-date gphc style questions Welcome to Pre-Reg Shortcuts, the number one Pre-Reg online training platform with over 85% student pass rate, 100% money back guarantee on some of our products. Study from the comfort of your home, outstanding customer service, 30 plus BNF, MEP and calculation videos, 100 plus up to date GPHC style questions. Welcome to Pre-Reg Shortcuts, the number one Pre-Reg online training platform with over 85% student pass rate, 100% money back guarantee on some of our products. Study from the comfort of your home, outstanding customer service, 30 plus BNF, MEP and calculation videos, 100 plus up to date GPHC style questions. Welcome to Pre-Reg Shortcuts, the number one Pre-Reg online training platform with over 85% student pass rate, 100% money back guarantee on some of our products. Study from the comfort of your home, outstanding customer service, 30 plus BNF, MEP and calculation videos, 100 plus up to date GPHC style questions. Hello, hello everybody, hello, hello. If you can see me right now, please just type one. Let me make sure you can see me, if you can see me, and if you can hear me clearly, please type one. Okay, I, uh, as usual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off by giving a special shout to everyone that's on here today. I've got, how are you, Kate? Good to see you, Kate. Um, I've got Chi Chi, hi. If you could just, if you can hear me clearly, if you can see me clearly, just type um as usual where you're dialing in from today just type and i'm getting a lot of, um those of you on youtube how are you i've got quite a few people on youtube we've got a few people as well on facebook so on facebook we've got about 81 of us on here which is great how are you um kate temi how are you elizabeth davis how are you prosy good to see you there curti Kurt. Hosna, how are you, Hosna? Hosna just joined the course yesterday. I remember that name. Um, Allah, good to see you, Allah. Miriam, Elizabeth on Facebook. Um, Gurang from Harlow. Brilliant. Angel, how are you, Angel? Thank you all for logging in. Praise. I hope I'm not left. Well, there's so many people on here. We've got about 100. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call everyone's name out, but um, I'm not leaving you, okay? So if you guys are ready um, to have a great evening tonight, if you're ready for learning, if you're excited, you're ready to do this, just um, those of you on Facebook, as usual, give the video a thumbs up or give it a heart. And those of you on YouTube, um, just give it a like, right? Those of you on YouTube, I've got praise on there. I've got Christopher. How are you, Christopher? Great to see all of you on there today. It's going to be fantastic. So um, if um, you could just share this as well, because today is going to be a very, very important session. And the reason why it's so important is because we're going to be covering stroke. We're also going to be dealing with um, some anticoagulants. And why this is so important is because you always get this in the exam. Uh, we'll also talk about warfarin, which is also a high-risk drug. So the things that we're going to cover today have a very high chance probably about, I will say about 95% that 
that the things that we're going to cover today will come up in your exam. So um, please share this so that no one misses out. There are some pre-reg students that have no support that are completely lost during this time. So if you could just share this, then that could help some students as well to motivate them and help them to get some knowledge. So brilliant. So let's begin. Um, we've got quite a lot to cover today. Can everyone still hear me? Hello, Joyin. How are you, Joyin? Um, I've got allies ready. Yvonne is ready. Great. Heto Patel. Great to see all of you on there. All right. So um, let me pull out the um, agenda for today. Okay, so that's the agenda for today. Um, can you guys all see the screen? I'll make that a bit bigger. Okay, great. So we're ready to go. So you guys can all still see me. You know what? Just type in one. Just type one. You can all see me there. Timmy is from Maidstone. That's in Kent. I actually went to school. I went to a boarding school in Canterbury called St. Edmund School. That's in Kent. I love Kent. It's a beautiful place. Um, okay, so let's, um, those of you, is there anyone that's here for the first time? I always try to recognize everyone that's here. So if you're here for the first time, please type one so that I know it's your first time and I can give you a shout out. Uh, but if you're here for the first time, we're going to go through the rules. But um, just about myself, I always try to introduce myself. But I'm Marvin Munza, I'm a pharmacy manager. So we've got Joshni, that says one, so Joshni's first time here, welcome. So um, I'm a pharmacy manager, Joshni, if you not know about me, I'm a superintendent pharmacist. I'm a BBC Media Pharmacist, author of the book, Success Secrets for Students, which by the way, by the way, I could send that out for free to all of you if you're interested, it's an ebook. Um, I'm also a personal trainer, a Jake Mann's media expert, an international speaker, I'm the managing director, as most of you already know, of Pre-Red Shortcuts with my colleague, Uma. I'm a community, I got um, a community pharmacist manager award, and um, I was nominated by the CND, shortlisted for one of the most influential pharmacists. And I'm also a natural bodybuilding champion. So thank you so much. That's an introduction for myself. And here's what we're going to cover today. So we're going to look into strokes. We're going to look at the different types of strokes. Again, everything that we do today, has been, they've all been designed to help you, to make it easy for you. And also, it's all done in line with your exam. So I structure these notes by, um, based on what normally comes up in your exam. That's why I don't want anyone to miss out on any of these sessions. Um, we're going to look at different types of strokes. We're going to look at how to manage the different types of strokes. We're going to look into oral anticoagulants. So look at cumarins and also phenindions. And then as usual, we're gonna have exam style questions. I think we've got about six questions at the end. And just a very short announcement. And there's a number of you fasting, and I think the fast um, for my time probably starts now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you three minutes. So we're literally gonna start at um, 8.43. If we could just give three minutes for those fasting to literally break the fast. And then we're going to jump in and then smash this chapter. Well, smash this topic completely. At 10 o'clock, um, there's a number of you that are on here that are on um, our Telegram group. If you're on the Telegram group, just type yes. If you're on the te Telegram group, just type yes, because it's really exciting now for um, the students on the Telegram group because we're doing a lot of revision. And Umar put out a calculation today, and he's going to be discussing the answer at 10 o'clock. So as soon as we finish this session, Uma has already told me, he's warned me, he said, Marvin, make sure you don't go over time today. Uma is like, I want all the students back in there at, um, in the Telegram group at 10 o'clock to discuss the answer of the calculation question which he posted today. So good, I'm going quite a few yeses there. So those of you breaking the fast, we'll just give a few minutes there. Just break your fast. Remember that, move back to all of you. And then we're going to jump straight in. So um, before we start, Again, let me just give a shout. I'm going to be um, going back and forth with Facebook and also with um, YouTube. So I've got all of you covered today. So I'm going to be back and forth. I'm going to be able to see the comments from Facebook and I'll also be able to see the comments from YouTube. So I'm now on Facebook. I've got Kivit Shah. Yes, can you send me the ebook? So Kivit Shah wants the ebook. After I finish, I'm getting quite a um, few people that want the ebooks. But yes, I'm going to send that out to you guys. I'm going to try to um, work it out somehow how you could get it. You might have to um, log in to. Um, 
something and then it will just come into your email directly but i'm going to arrange that but i'll send that to you guys it's really it's such a good book so callum garner copied quite a few. oh thank you callum callum has copied quite a few people on there that's really good because it shows that you're someone that obviously cares for your colleagues and you want to pass which is why we are doing this as well so i really appreciate students like you or should i say pretty much pharmacists like you um Prabhav patel can you share the Telegram group link? So the Telegram group is only for students that are enrolled in our course. As I said, this session is just a summary. Um, but if you wanted detailed notes, if you liked this session and you thought you wanted detailed notes, you wanted to join a group with other pre-reg students, there are about 200 on the Telegram group. Then um, once you get enrolled on the course, you've been entitled to join the group, okay? So really it's for those that are on the course already. Right, um, let's begin. Okay, so. That's the program for today. And so first question for you guys, I'm ready and I'm excited. Sit up in your seats, relax, let's do this. So the first thing, first question is, what are the different types of strokes? As part of your exam, you need to know the different types of strokes. You need to know the definitions and you also need to know how to manage each different type of stroke. So can you guys just type down as normal, just type down the different types of strokes. The three main ones, the three main types of strokes. Kate says, I miss Omar, so I will start joining the group. <laughs> Omar is amazing. Omar is so much fun, guys. I mean, you guys, Omar, Omar will be there to, um, at 10 p.m. and the Telegram group is such a genius. Such a genius with the calculations. Okay, let me try to see your answers, um, definitions. Okay, so I've got TIA, let's see. Um, I get, I, it seems like it comes quicker on YouTube. So I've got um, Darius that says ischemic and ischemic, um, hemorrhagic, correct. I've got TIA, great. So um, three main strokes that you need to know. Um, the first one, in any order, is your TIAs, which is called your transient ischemic stroke. You've got your acute strokes or acute ischemic strokes, and then you have what we call intracerebral hemorrhage, or what we call hemorrhagic strokes, that strokes in the brain. So um, I've got a code, those of you on the course will have a different code, you have TIA, but I use, the acronym I use now is HIT, H-I-T, which is literally hemorrhagic stroke, ischemic stroke, and transient stroke, okay? On the course, we have TIA, which is transient ischemic stroke, ischemic stroke, and A is for, what's A for? It's for acute ischemic stroke. So brilliant. So these are three types of strokes that you need to definitely know of. I need to know the definitions and then you need to know the management of each type. So um, very important as well, comes up in exam questions, comes up in mock papers. What are the symptoms of stroke? DJ self says, thank you, bro. We remember HIT, heat for stroke, yes. Remember heat, or oh, as I said, remember, those on the course remember TIA. TIA is good as well, because I think um, TIA, you remember TIA strokes said, it's quite a good one too, but I like heat. I like heat, because it's like heat training, it's high intensity, isn't it? <laughs> so, yes, I'm getting the acronyms FAST for the symptoms. Is there anyone that doesn't know about FAST? If you've never heard of FAST, F-A-S-T, for symptoms of stroke, please just type zero, so I make sure that um, I get you updated. So, um, Doris says fast. Audrey, Audrey is from Cameroon, like myself. Sava Audrey. <laughs> Good to see Audrey on the course as well. Kimberly, yes. So fast. Um, we've got face drop, slur, speech, weakness. Great. So you guys need to know the symptoms that come up in the exam. So the symptoms of the as acronym is fast. So the face drop. So one side of the face generally is going to drop. Um, you've got arm weakness. Generally, it's just one arm. There's normally going to be weakness in one arm. As a test, you normally ask the patients to maybe try to lift both arms up, and that's when you can know if someone's having a stroke or has had a stroke. Um, so the face is going to drop. So um, face drop, arm weakness, and then the speech is going to get slurred. And another test as well is if someone is suspected of having a stroke, you want to ask them to say something back to you. Okay, you just want to tell them to say something, and then you'll be able to tell from the speech because they'll be slurred. and um, if that happens, then the T stands for it's time to die 999. So if you get those top three, then the last T is, if you get any of the symptoms, if you see the patient's face is dropped, arm is weak, 
speech is slurred, then it's time to dial 999. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, give me a one. Give me a one. Type in one. Type in one. Give me a love heart. Give me a love heart. Give a like. If that makes sense. Good. So fast. Remember fast. Okay. Um, next one is, this is um, definitely another, an, a very key area for your exam. You will get them in exam because they have come up in almost every exam. They will come up again. So how do we manage transient ischemic stroke? Two things I'm going to tell you guys to make it easy for you. When it comes to stroke, right, you need to know what a stroke is, first of all. Don't mix it up with um, a heart attack. So a stroke is just a clot that goes up to the brain and it stops blood from going onto your brain and then that causes a stroke, okay? But um, the two types when it comes to management, we've got what we call initial management and we have what we call long-term management, all right? So when it comes to stroke, you've got three types. But the ones that are the most important are your TIAs, okay, your TIA and your ischemic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke, we don't really deal a lot with them because they normally require surgery. But the main ones that you will see come up a lot in your exam are the um, TIA and ischemic stroke. And those are the two that we're going to focus on. In the notes, more detail, you have details on all three strokes, but for this revision session, we're just gonna focus on the main ones that probably come from the exam. Okay, so initial management. What is the initial management, guys, for transient ischemic stroke? What have we got? So Kimberly says aspirin 300. It's important that you know what medication, you need to know the dose as well. Someone asked me that question, I'm not, um, students normally ask me this question anyway, Marvin, what doses do we need to learn? Do we need to learn all the drugs in the BNF and all the doses? No, but there are certain ones that you do and we normally tell, show you which ones you need to learn and um, this is one of them, okay? So um, Kimberly says aspirin 300, Jim says are symptoms different from signs? No, they're the same, okay? Signs and symptoms are the same, all right? So when I say symptoms are used interchangeably, I'm referring to signs. Ketchy goes, um, is put down outer place. Very important, Ketchy, hold on to that outer place. I've got Audrey that says outer place for the first 4.5 hours. Be very careful because anyone that's writing outer place now is wrong, right? You guys are wrong. And that's why I'm happy you're putting that down because by the end of this um, session, you're going to know exactly and you're not going to mix that up because many times we mix this up and you don't want to mix up an exam. So transient TIA is completely different from ischemic stroke and they both manage initially differently. So I've got um, aspirin 200 for 14 days, completely wrong, all right? Not for transient ischemic strokes. Not for transient ischemic stroke. So for transient ischemic stroke, we manage them initially by aspirin. So if someone has another symptoms, a transient stroke is just, a, a TIA just happens, a stroke that just, happens very quickly, okay? It lasts, it's very short-lived, so just a few minutes. You might have all those signs, the fast signs. You might have those just for a few minutes. It might be a few seconds. It might just be a few hours, and then you sort of come back to normal. So you, most people that got TIAs don't normally become paralyzed or have some of the typical sort of symptoms that you know of with stroke, okay? It's not a full-blown stroke. It's a mini-stroke. So another name for TIA is a mini stroke, all right? So in terms of the management, it's aspirin 300. So once you've called 999, patient is taken to hospital, A&E. Once they're rushed into hospital, then um, the normally need to determine what type of stroke the patient has had, okay? So before you treat them to determine the type of stroke, if it's a TIA, they're given aspirin 300 immediately. If the patient cannot take aspirin 300, maybe due to sensitivity, then you could give clopidogrel 75 milligrams once a day, okay? So it's either aspirin 300 or it's clopidogrel, and this is for initial management of LTIA. And then once you've done that, then you could do long-term management. So as I said, for now, we're only focusing on initial management so that you don't mix them up. Is this clear for the initial management? Give me a two, give me a two, give me a two. This is clear, give me a two, give me a two, give me a two, give me a two. Okay, someone says, um, should you give, Kevin says, should you give before the ambulance comes and inform them when they come? It's a very big question mark about this. And the reason why it's a big question mark is because, I'll, I'll tell you that later, but you should only really give the medication when you know the type of stroke the patient is having. Because aspirin is very effective for TIA, but you'll find out later, you shouldn't give aspirin to someone that's having a hemorrhagic stroke. And the, and the challenge is, 
when you have a stroke, you cannot tell from the patient's symptoms what stroke they're having. So once the patient has the fast, you can't tell whether it's a TIA straight away or whether it's, um, it's, an, it's an ischemic stroke. You cannot tell that straight away, all right, on, until you do the test. So you shouldn't just give them aspirin straight away. You need to, once they go in, they're going to have a quick test. They'll be able to tell, and they're going to give them medication. But the last thing you want to do is to give aspirin 300 to someone that's having a hemorrhagic stroke. So you need to know what type of stroke it is before the medication is given. Does that make sense? Great stuff. So um, let's go now into initial management for ischemic stroke. So we've looked at is initial management, which is quite easy for TIA. It's just aspirin 300 or clopidogrel 75. Now let's look for um, at, um, the management for an ischemic stroke. An ischemic stroke, the difference is this is a full-blown stroke. Okay. So when we talk about TIAs, we're talking about mini stroke as a TIA and an ischemic stroke as a full-blown stroke. Is that clear? So what is the initial management for a full-blown stroke? And this is where your are place and things come in. So what, what do you guys think? What is the initial management for this? And you get a lot of questions on ischemic stroke. This is the main one that you get a lot of questions on, all right? So with um, ischemic stroke, the drugs that I use is very important. Timing is very important with stroke. It has to be done very quickly. So some of you already put the answers down. So what you do with um, the initial management, if a patient has a full-blown stroke, then um, they're given out of place within 4.5 hours. So um, the timing is so important. It has to be within four and a half hours. If it is after four and a half hours, then this medication out of place is not effective. Okay, so for out of place to work, which is um, a thrombolytic drug, it breaks down the clot. For it to work, it has to be given within 4.5 hours. Now, there's a lot of research that is going on, especially in the United States. And there are ways now, some technologies that can help for patients that um, have a stroke and they probably get to the hospital after 4.5 hours. There are now strategies and technologies that can help to actually go into the brain and get that clot out. It's amazing. So if a patient has a stroke and, is, and you find them on the floor and they've been lying on the floor for about six hours, there is no point giving out of place. Out of place will only work if it's within 4.5 hours. So that's the first part. So once you give them out of place, you wait for 24 hours. And then 24 hours later, they're given aspirin 300 or clopidogrel once daily for 14 days. So everything I've highlighted in red are very important. They do come up in exam questions and there is a high chance that you will see this in your exam. So learn out of place and it's for ischemic stroke, not for TIA, it's ischemic stroke out of place. It has to be given within 4.5 hours, learn that time. And then after 24 hours, you give them aspirin and this aspirin or clopidogrel is given once daily and it has to be for 14 days. So this, that's initial management. And then after this, we're going to look at the long-term management. So once you've treated them initially, how do you continue to treat them to prevent the stroke from happening again? Is this all clear? Is this all clear? Does this make sense? Give me a one, give me a one, type in one, type in one. Let me make sure that we're all on the same wavelength. So great, I've got out of place from MFA on, on YouTube, out of places within 4.5 hours. If after, then give aspirin or tigagrello, clopidogrel, good out of place within 4.5 hours. So you've got the timing right, which is great. So out of place, 4.5 hours, 24 hours later, you give them aspirin, 300 milligrams. If they cannot have, um, if they're intolerant to aspirin, they could give them clopidogrel, 75 milligrams once daily for 14 days. That's the initial management. Now we're going to look into long-term management. The good news is with the long-term management for TIAs and for ischemic stroke is the same. Okay, so we use the same. Um, what we use for long-term management in a TIA is the same that we use for long-term management in ischemic strokes. But we've looked at the initial management are different. All right, for TIA the initial management is different, and the ischemic is different. But for long-term management, the same. So it's very, very important that you know this stuff. So um, I put a slide here, it's quite a big slide. With the um, long-term management, the so one we treated them initially, they have, you treat them with antiplatelets. So when it comes to TIAs and when it comes to strokes, a very, another important thing which you need to know, which comes up in exam questions, and they may try to trick you or catch you on this, is watch out for patients that have a stroke with atrial fibrillation 
and those that have a stroke without atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation, AF, is very important. And the main difference is with strokes, you normally treat them for long-term prevention. You normally use what we call antiplatelets. Learn the difference between antiplatelets and anticoagulants, the difference, okay? So when we talk about antiplatelets, we're looking at clopidogrel, dipyridomol, aspirin. These are your antiplatelets. When we talk about anticoagulants, we're looking at things like warfarins, your novel anti-anticoagulants, like your rivaroxabans, your heparins, your dabigatrans. But um, for stroke, you use antiplatelets for long term. But that is with patients that don't have AF, atrial fibrillation. If the patient's got AF, then you can use anticoagulants. So it's discouraged to use anticoagulants in stroke unless the patient has atrial fibrillation. Okay, very important, guys. I'm giving you important information that if you don't know the stuff, if you're learning by yourself, you might not pick these things up. But as I said to you, I always target my revision based on the exam and areas that I know the GPH can test you on. And I'm highlighting these things for you. So antiplatelets, that's what you use for long term. So you could use clopidogrel, which is the recommended antiplatelets for long term management of ischemic stroke and TIAs. If a patient cannot take clopidogrel, then you could give them MR dipyridomol. Or if they cannot tolerate dipyridomol, you could give them aspirin. Or you could give a combination. So, you, so it's going to be one of those. It's either going to be a combination of, say, aspirin and dipyridomol, or you could give aspirin on its own, or you could give dipyridomol on its own, or you could give clopidogrel on its own. All right? So that is um, long-term management. If the patient has got AF, they've got atrial fibrillation, then you can give them warfarin or you can give them on other anticoagulants like rivaroxaban, et cetera. Does this make sense? If you, if you didn't know this and this, you've learned something new, please type yes, all right? Let me just make sure. If you're learning something new, you tell, wow, I didn't know that, but now it's clear, I know this. Please type yes, because I want to make sure that all of you pass your exam. This says, um, Kate, Kate says, imagine Magna Uma being your pre <laughs> Oh, we'd love to be all your previous students. Lisbeth Davis says, um, yeah, we used um, Tiga Gerlof first line post ACS. Exactly. So um, a common area where students get this wrong, and I was a previous student myself, and I made these errors or these mistakes many times. Most people get mixed up between stroke and ACS. MI, STEMI, heart attacks, they are completely different. Although they sort of come from the same basis, it's like, um, a clot in your brain is a stroke, while a clot in your heart is a heart attack, but you use different treatments. So don't mix them up, guys. Whatever happens, please don't mix up stroke treatments with MIs. They're completely different. All right? So, um, yes, so this is what you guys need to learn. If you know this stuff, if you're learning this stuff, great. Okay, great stuff. So we'll continue with the long-term management. So you give them antiplatelets if they don't have atrial fibrillation. If they've got atrial fibrillation, give them an anticoagulant like warfarin, all right? And then you give them a statin as well. You normally give statins for primary and secondary prevention, which we're going to come into later on, okay? You give what we call a high-intensity statin. Those of you on the course have detailed notes on all of this stuff. But um, you give them a statin, okay? You monitor the blood pressure. You can give them some beta blockers. Monitor blood pressure. Give them a statin. And then most importantly, lifestyle advice. So alcohol, stop reducing or stopping alcohol if they can, stopping smoking, weight loss, low salt in your diet, all of that stuff, okay? Exercise. So lifestyle advice, monitor blood pressure, give them a statin, and also give them an antiplatelet or give them an anticoagulant. And that's your initial management and your long-term management of your TIAs and your ischemic stroke. I could bet you guys 100% some of these things you're going to see this either in your exam or in mock questions that you're going to do okay is this all clear if it's all clear you think wow i learned this stuff this is good marvin i'm liking this stuff i'm enjoying this stuff if you think this is good give me a love heart give me a love heart those of you on facebook give me a love heart those of you on youtube just type something nice just type great nice more marvin i love this How, however you feel type it down okay so now we're going to go into um our anticoagulants we're going to look at cumarins. Okay, we're going to look at cumarins. Can you guys tell me examples of cumarins? So I said everything I'm showing you today are things that come up in your exam. Okay, there's nothing that is just a waste of time. There's nothing that's just out. Every single thing is really focused on the key things you need to know. 
And if you want to know more, then obviously you, you get on the course. You have a lot more information. We can't cover everything in just an hour, but um, at least you have something here that if you're not on the course, this is still going to help you to pass the exam, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so warfarin, I've got example. I've got warfarin as an example of um, accumarin. We have got um, phenin dions, correct? So, yes, yeah, so the three main ones we'll talk about um, cumarins. We'll look at warfarin, which is a drug of choice with cumarins. We've got what we call acinocumarol, and then we have um, phenin dions, okay? But the drug of choice is warfarin. Warfarin is a high risk drug. And all high-risk drugs, um, you have at least one question on each high-risk drug or group of drugs in your exam. So guess what? You will get a, a question. I can bet you 100%. You will get a question on warfarin. And you will get a question on INR and some of the things that we're going to cover right now. All right, so learn your cumarins. Learn your cumarins. And then next thing that comes up is you need to know how cumarins work. Can you guys tell me how they work? So cumarins are your phenin dions. How do they work? Mechanism of action, you need to know. They come up in your exams. They might come up again. And all these questions do not come up directly like, they're not, they're not just going to ask you how do they work. They're going to ask in a different way. All right, and we're going to do that. We're going to have some questions at the end. So... I can't spell the other one. Let me see. Okay, I've got Kate saying, I'm missing some of your comments. So I've got so many comments. Like I'm looking at Facebook, I've got 100 comments on there and I have more than 100 as well on, on YouTube. But I'm just trying to pick up um, comments as I see them. Don't think I'm ignoring you or anything. I want everyone to, I'm on answer everyone's questions. Um, Kate can spell something. I don't know what it is. I'm guessing it's probably one of those words like acenocumerol because that's really a mouthful, isn't it? Okay, so how do they work? They antagonize the effects of vitamin K. Learn that, okay? They antagonize the effects of vitamin K, and they also take about two to three days to have the full anticoagulant effect, okay? Antagonize the effects of vitamin K. That's a mechanism of action of cumarins and phenindions, and also they take at least 48 to 72 hours for anticoagulants to have the full effect. Great stuff. Learn that stuff exam question right there now with warfarin i wouldn't go so much into detail i have um everyone on the course did you guys receive the summary that i sent to you on the high risk drugs so if you receive the summary i sent a detailed summary it was like um slides on each high risk drug and everything you need to know did you guys all get that if you got that give me a one give me one or just no type yes if you got that just type yes those of you that are on the course you can also get on facebook on youtube i've got a youtube video that gives you talks about different high risk drugs. So you need to learn your high risk drugs. You need to, we learn so much. We spend so much time on high risk drugs in detail. So with warfarin to high risk drugs, I'm not going to cover everything on here on warfarin, but I'm going to give you guys some of the key things. So an important thing you need to know is the MHRA and CHM advice with warfarin. There were two key ones that are so important. In fact, one of them, um, I think it was in 2017. But um, do you guys know the two key ones, the two main MHRA advice with warfarin. Can you guys type it down for me? Type them down for me. We might, um, this session might go a bit longer. It might go a bit longer than one hour. I right? forgive me, guys. If you guys want me to continue, I will continue. It's just because there are quite a few things on here that I want to show you guys are so important. And also, we've got some good questions at the end. So it might take slightly um, more than um, an hour today. But um, I've promised Uma that all of you will be back in the Telegram group before 10. <laughs> if, not, if not, it's going to kill me. So two important MHRA advice for Warfarin. What do you guys have? Let me go to YouTube. It's YouTube. Wow, that's fast on YouTube. Let's see what we've got. Oh, my YouTube is frozen now. Can you guys see him? If you can hear me, just type in one. If you can hear me, type in one. I think I might have a problem with my connection. If you guys can see, hear me, please type one. Right, it seems like I had a, sh a problem with my connection. Can you guys still hear me? If you can still hear me, just type one, please. Let me make sure that you guys are still connected. Because for some reason, it looks like there was an internet disconnection
Okay, so I'm getting one. So we're back on. All right, nothing's gonna stop us tonight, guys. Nothing's gonna stop us now. We are so I've got um from YouTube, I've got Mikonazole and Wolverine. Very good. That's one of them. Um, anything else? What's the second one? So I've got Mikonazole, I've got Mikonazole. So many people talk about Mikonazole. Most people know about that one, but most people don't know about the second one, which is what Kimberly has put down, which is calciphylaxis. Calciphylaxis is so important. This normally happens with patients that have renal disease, and it's just literally a very painful rash. So um, the G patient might give a scenario where a patient that is on warfarin, for instance, has got this um, and it's got renal failure, or they might give you some results of creatinine clearance or something that might indicate that they have some sort of um, renal disease, right? And if they give you that, they might then I'll tell you this patient has say, a very painful rash and ask you, what do you do, right? Do you just treat that rash with some antihistamines or something? Do you just give them some steroids or do you refer them? So in this case, you need to refer them, okay? And so your calciphylaxis and is the first one. So it's quite common in patients with renal disease. It's a very painful rash. That's how you can recognize it. And um, you need to refer them to doctor. The second one is also so important. It comes up especially because it's an OTC medication. It's the interaction between meconazole, this dactarine, and warfarin. So what that does, that interaction could cause very fatal bleeding. So you get unexplained um, bruising, nosebleeds, or blood in the urine. So if any patient that's on warfarin and that uses meconazole, dactarine, oral gel, if they experience any unexplained um, bleeding or bruising, then they need to stop the medication straight away and you need to refer them urgently to the doctor. Is that clear? If that's clear, give me a two. Give me a two. Type in two. Let me make sure, because I lost the connection there for a few seconds, but let me make sure on Facebook we're together. Kate, are you still on there, Kate? <laughs> right, Kate is going to fill me in with Facebook, make sure no one is missing out anything. Warfarin and direct acting antivirals, changes in liver function as well. Very good. So I said all of these things, when you get, um, the, when you get the high-risk drugs notes, you have more detail. I'm just giving you some of the key ones that will potentially come up in the exam. But um, the list is there's quite a very long list when it comes to warfarin and interactions. So um, what is the antidote of warfarin? With all your anticoagulants, which we're going to cover on later on, you need to know antidotes as well. Right, so when we say antidotes, what we mean is if you have an excess of that, an overdose of the anticoagulant, what do you give to reverse it? Okay, that's what we call an antidote. So you need to know your antidotes for your anticoagulants. For your exam, like warfarin, you need to know the antidote. You need to know your antidotes for heparins. You need to know your antidotes for dabigatron. You need to know your antidotes for, say, rivaroxaban. So generally, the, the GPC likes asking you questions on antidotes. Okay, so I've got um, phytomenodione, great stuff. Um, Sherry Daniel says vitamin K, Callum Ghana, Callum, Callum, thanks for um, sharing. Callum, you're amazing, you're top man. So Callum says um, vitamin K, I'm going vitamin K. Um, I'm getting some of you that are quite scientific, like Nana says phytomenodione, very good. So you need to know both names for vitamin K. Right, you need to know it's um, vitamin K, but you also need to know the phytomenodione because sometimes the GPC will give you some of the brand names for things. They might give you the other names. And if you don't know that, then you might get a question wrong. So vitamin K1, or vitamin K, phytomenodione. That is your antidote. So um, what foods, another thing you need to know is what foods and drinks do you need to watch out for for patients of warfarin? So what do you advise for patients in terms of the foods that they need to avoid or need to have in moderation or the drinks? What do you guys say? So Miriam, Miriam Dalla, how are you, Miriam? Miriam says vitamin K, good stuff, Miriam. Quenda, Quenda, you are right, Quenda? Quenda, vitamin K, great stuff, Quenda, great stuff. Trying to get everyone's comments. It is really quite difficult, but I'm trying my best, all right? Forgive me if I've not called your name, but I've got you in the heart. So, um, Yes, so you, um, yes, and YouTube's talking about um, yellow books as well. So I said there's a lot more on warfarin, guys, but um, that's on the course. That's on the high risk drugs. That's quite a full um, lecture that we've had. But um, just make sure that at least you know everything that I'm showing you on these slides right now. Okay, great. Um, let me see where we are on YouTube. Let me, sc let me scroll down to your comments. 
Okay, so I've got green vegetables, I've got cranberry juice, I've got alcohol, I've got grapefruit. Great, great, great stuff. So I'm going to show you guys very quickly. Cranberry juice is the big one. Okay, avoid cranberry juice. That's the big one. All right, cranberry juice. Also, we talk about green um, vegetables, they've got high in vitamin K, but it's not avoiding them, it's avoiding a change. Okay, so you could still have your green vegetables, things like your liver, your sprouts, your broccoli, but um, what you don't want to do is have a change. So it, all of a sudden, if you just start eating loads of vegetables, then that's when that could affect your warfarin. So what you want to do is just stick to the same quantities that you're having and don't make any drastic changes. And alcohol, that's the same. You can, they can, patients on, on warfarin can have alcohol, but it has to be in moderation. They've got follow the guidelines of the recommended limits if they can avoid alcohol even better. All right, but just like your green vegetables with alcohol, it has to be within limits. Good stuff, great guys, good answers. So um, that's a big a question for you. We need to talk about warfarin in pregnancy. Can you give warfarin in pregnancy, yes or no? Can you give warfarin in pregnancy, yes or no? Can you give warfarin in pregnancy? I've got no um, from Audrey. I've got yes from MFA. I've got yes from Allah. I've got no. I've got Hosna says no. CJ says no. Lee says no. Heta says no. Kevika says no. Ketchibam says yes. Wow. So we've got um, more no's than yeses. And um, it's a no. Okay. It's a no. Well, some people will say you could probably give it the third trimester. But when I talk about, when I ask you guys this question, I'm talking about safety first. Okay. What would you generally do? Will you give warfarin? No. You're better off giving them heparins because those, those um, heparins don't cross the placenta. But um, warfarins are teratogenic, okay? So no, okay? The teratogenic risk of congenital malformations, they can also cause hemorrhage, they cause a bleed for the unborn baby, for the fetus. So avoid warfarin, okay? It's a no-no. It's a no-no. But I said most of the time you will see situations where if someone absolutely has to have that warfarin, which I don't see why, you, you should really give them warfarin when they're pregnant, when you've got other options that are safer. But yes, probably in the third trimester. In fact, you need to avoid in the third trimester. Right? First and third trimester, definitely to avoid it. In fact, avoid warfarin, guys. It's teratogenic. The other options go for the heparins. Okay? So that's a no. That's a no. All right, so next one, um, I'm not going to go through this. Again, because the counseling is very important, warfarin, um, the interactions as well, but you have to refer to the high-risk drugs notes. Those of you already have them, the course. Those of you who don't have them, join the course, and you have access to all of this stuff. But um, I can't go through all of that now. But um, I'll give you the main things that will potentially come up. Now, this is another thing, your INRs. INRs are key. INRs are so important. You get loads and loads of questions in your exam on INRs. So INRs, you need to know target values. They used to have ranges before, but now we have target values. So you need to know um, what the different target values are, and you need to know um, the different conditions with the um, desired INR for that specific condition. So the first question I want to ask you guys, what conditions require a target value of 2.5? So you need to know what INR stands for. You need to know what um, INR, so this is for warfarin, okay? So what conditions, if someone on warfarin, what sort of conditions do they require a target value of 2.5? Kirit says, always counsel young women and pregnancy, definitely. And always try to avoid any medications in pregnancy if you can. Okay, so I've got for 2.5 um, from Facebook. Helen, how are you, Helen? Helen says VTE. Um, Callum, Callum says AF. Quenda AF, correct, correct, guys, correct. Good stuff, good stuff. That question, um, Kate says, that question you put up recently was a bit ambiguous. Yes, and that was intentional. So I had a question yesterday that was a, a bit ambiguous for a reason, because I wanted you guys to know something about the difference between a mitral stenosis and a mitral valve replacement. But um, we'll talk about that in the Telegram group, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, yes, someone's got cardioversion, Elizabeth, fantastic cardioversion. Share with says mitral valve replacement preoperative, good. And then um, I've got mitral heart valves. So you guys need to learn this stuff. You need to learn um, 2.5 is your target. You have you can go above by five by 0.5 or below by um, 0.5. Okay, so you got 2.5 as a target, but um, it should normally be within that range. So really between three and two. 
but we talk about INR targets, okay? 2.5 is for the treatment of DVT and PE and AF. So I put those ones in red because of the main ones that come in your exam, but you also need to know the other three. So cardioversion, mitral stenosis, and dilated cardiomyopathy all require um, a target of 2.5 INR. The next one, we need to know about 2.5 and you also need to know about 3.5. So which, which um, conditions require an INR target of 3.5? By the way, if you're enjoying this session, if you're learning something from this session, type in yes. <laughs> I like saying yes because it's easy to type yes, right? Just type yes. If you're learning something today, if you're enjoying this stuff, if you want me to do more of this stuff, you think, wow, this is good. This at least keeps me um, updated with my knowledge, then type in yes. Great. So, um. If you guys just write down as well what um, conditions you think require a target INR value of 3.5. So I've got yeses, good stuff. Um, Audrey says recurrent DVT. Yeah. Um, Keruka says recurrent DVT and PE. Correct. I'm getting a lot of yeses. Good, guys. Good for the feedback. Hoda, Hoda says um, recurrent PE. Good. So a good way to remember this stuff is quite easy, to be honest, because the first two, you have 2.5 is for treatment of um, DVT and PE. I'm going to give you guys as well different ways, because I learn a lot of stuff when it comes to GPT. I know all the tricks. I know all the techniques. I know every single thing they, they try to do. Now, um, the way you, you, they could ask that a question is that they could tell you a patient has got a new onset of DVT or PE, all right? So if it's a new onset, then it's going to be INR 2.5. With INR 3.5, it's recurrent DVT. So this patient has already had it, and they're having it again and again, okay? So that's why I have that word in red. So if it's recurrent or anything that they're having it again, or they give you a past history, they've had it before and having this stuff, then it's INR 3.5. If it's a new onset DVT or a new onset PE, then it's 2.5. If they've got atrial fibrillation, it's 2.5, all right? So recurrent DVT and PE is 3.5, and then mechanical prosthetic heart valve, 3.5. Learn this stuff, learn this stuff, learn this stuff. Learn this stuff. And most of you, after you've done this session with me, as I always say this to you, because I know the value I'm giving to you, I know how much um, I put, how much effort I put into doing this for you guys. And the real reason why I do this is because I want to make a difference in your lives, right? And I know that once you listen to this and you follow the sessions and you go back to do past papers or you go back to do like mocks and exam questions, most of this stuff, you're going to look back and go, wow, Marvin, I just did a question and you mentioned that in this stuff and I've got it right. And that's what gives me a lot of joy, making sure that you get it right. So um, in terms of another thing about INR warfarin is how you interpret results. Part of your GPC framework, they require you to be able to know what the results are and also to be able to interpret results. So, and a very important way you need to be able to interpret is your INR results, okay? So, we're going to look into how, what you do with the results. So, what does it mean if you say someone has got an INR of 8? What do you do? What actions do you take? If they've got an INR of 8 or they've got an INR of 6 or they've got bleeding or they've got an INR of 1.5. So, what actions do you take, right? And that's what you need to know. So. Um, I'm going to give you two tips. So when it comes to learning about INR, there are two key words you need to learn. There are two key words you need to learn. And I'm going to make this so easy for you. And after this, believe me, if you get any questions on this stuff, you're going to smash it. All right? Ketchy says, Marvin, what if the patient has a target value of 3.0 and its new onset of AF will be a good value? Yes, that would be fine. Two would be fine because I said you need to be um, within the range. It's 2.5 to 3 or um, 2.5 going down to 0. It could be 0.5 up or below. But as I said, the GPH will try to be more specific. Okay, it's going to be 2.5. It's going to be 2.5. They won't really give you 3. If they give you 3 and they give you 2.5, you go for 2.5. All right? It's normally 2.5. Like I said, we use more um, target values, supposed to ranges, and the target value is normally 2.5. Okay? So, Interpreting the results. Two key things you guys need to learn to understand this is you need to know about bleeding and INR. So if you have any question, if the GPH gives you any question on this, on INR, and they ask you what actions to take, you've got to ask yourself two questions. Is the patient bleeding? And the second question is, what is the INR value? Okay? Is the patient bleeding? What is the INR value? And the questions later on, I'm going to show you how to apply this knowledge. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to apply all of this stuff. So here's what you need to learn. So INR or bleeding action. So the first thing is this. 
if a patient is bleeding, okay, we're going to look at bleeding. So taking warfarin and they start bleeding, what do you do? Okay, so we're going to look at bleeding first, and then we're going to look at patients that are not bleeding. So if any patient is bleeding, this is a general rule for you to help you to make it easy for you. If they give you any question and a patient is on warfarin and the patient starts bleeding, regardless of whether it's major bleeding or minor bleeding, you give them IV vitamin K. You stop warfarin, you give them IV vitamin K, and then you start warfarin when the INR is less than five. Okay? So regardless, anytime you see bleeding, you have to give that, you need to stop the warfarin and give them IV vitamin K. Until the INR is less than five, then you restart warfarin. So that's what I'm saying. The first thing you ask yourself is, is that patient bleeding? And then you know what to do. The second thing, if the patient isn't bleeding, they're not bleeding, then you need to look at the INR. So that will be based on the INR. So if they're not bleeding, if the INR is greater than eight, you stop the warfarin, but you give them oral vitamin K. Learn the difference when you give IV vitamin K and when you give oral vitamin K. So IV vitamin K is always for bleeding, but oral vitamin K is when they're not bleeding, but they've got high INR, which is greater than eight. If the INR is between five to eight, then what you do is you just withhold one or two doses, and then you just reduce the subsequent uh, maintenance doses of warfarin. If you guys learned this stuff here, just this slide, I can promise you 100%, any question that Jeff is gonna ask around this, you'll be able to smash it very easily. Because what I've done for you is a summary. It's a very good summary. So question to ask yourself, is the patient bleeding? If they're bleeding, you give them vitamin K, you stop that warfarin, you have to give them vitamin K. Once the iron house come down to less than five, then you start them on warfarin again. If the patient isn't bleeding and they just have a high INR, they need to ask yourself, is the INR greater than eight? If the INR is greater than eight, you give them oral vitamin K, not IV, oral vitamin K. If the INR is just between five and eight, so it's not above eight, it's just between five and eight, then you don't need to give them vitamin K. All you need to do is just hold the doses so you stop them from taking one or two doses of, of warfarin, and then you reduce the next maintenance dose they're gonna put them on, okay? So if they were, say, on, say, three milligrams of warfarin and they take that once in the morning, so you, you tell them not to take it for about two days and then you start them again, you reduce it to about two milligrams. Does that make sense? And then you measure the, the INR and that's how it works. Great stuff. But all of this stuff will make sense when we do questions as well. So are you guys ready for questions? It's about 9.23 now. Well, we've not done too bad. We've not done too bad. We might be pleased to know that we're just we're starting the questions now. Great, great, great. So we're going to do questions now, and then we're going to apply all this incredible knowledge that we've learned. We're going to put this all. So give me a yes. Give me a yes. Give me a yes if you're ready for questions. Give me a yes if you're ready to smash this exam. Right, let's go to Facebook. I'm not forgetting you guys' Facebook. I'm like swinging in between screens. I've got YouTube here. I've got Facebook. Well, I love it. It's great. It's great. So Helen says, yes. Um, let me see. I've got lots of yeses. You guys are all ready for questions, which is great. Gosh, 198 comments on Facebook. Where am I going to start? <laughs> all right, great. Great stuff. Great stuff. There's a question that I missed. I think someone's asked a question. I can't see the question. I really want to answer that question. Someone asked something about it. But hey, you know what? Later on, once I finish this, I still go back to you. I'll still go back to all the comments. It's going to take me quite a few hours. But I'll go back to all your individual comments, and I'm going to make sure I reply to each and every one of you individually, all right? I'll reply to you. And if not, you can always email me. If you have any questions about anything today, I'll be more than happy to answer personally, all right? So great stuff. You guys are ready for questions? Let us do this. Let us do this. So those of you that are here for the first time, if you're here for the first time, type 1, type 1, type 1. If you're here for the first time, type 1. If you're here for the first time today, just type one. The reason is because we need to go through the rules before we start. Okay, so the rules of the game, most of you have been here already. Rules of the game, I'm going to give you one minute to answer the question. Please don't put your answers down. Okay, those of you put in one, Liz, how are you, Liz? Titi, how are you? Joshni, how are you? So for those of you that are here for the first time, we're going to do um, questions now under time conditions. I'm going to give you one minute to answer the question. If it's a long question, I might give you two minutes. But um, you want to get into the habit of answering questions within a minute, right? Because that's from the GPHC. It's, it's good practice for clinical. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute. And then but what I'm saying is once you have your answer, once you know the answer, please, 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 
is please don't type it in okay don't write your answer down please don't put it down in the comments until i ask for it okay just keep it to yourself and i'm going to ask you what your answer is then you can type it in because it's just out of respect let's respect everyone that's on here some people need more time so there's no point you putting your answers your comments then it's going to distract the others all right so just treat it like an exam condition all right so keep your answers and then when i ask you for your answer you can then give me your answer is that cool? If you guys are ready to go, give me a thumbs up. Give me a love heart. Give me a yes. Give me a yes, a thumbs up, love heart. All right, there's about 100 of us on YouTube. Great stuff. All right, let's do this. Question number one. Set my timer. I always forget to set my timer. Hang on. Let me set this timer. Okay. Getting love hearts, getting thumbs up, great stuff. By the way, if you're just joining us, please just share. If you can share this on your wall, share this with friends, invite anyone, copy, type anyone's name in there so that everyone benefits from this session. I want everyone to be every pre-reg student because you all deserve it. So question number one, there we go. One minute starts. Look at the delay in the screen. Your one minute starts now. Right, stop. That's the first question. So, I'm gonna ask for your answers. What's your answer, guys? What's your answer? What's the answer for the first question? Let me see what you guys have. So I've got Keruka, the first person to type on YouTube says B. All right, B. Let me see what answers you guys all have. So I've got Bs coming up, 2.5. Bs, I'm gonna love 2.5, I'm gonna love Bs. Um, Elizabeth, oh, I think Elizabeth asked a question. It keeps disappearing, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Davis on YouTube. I can see your question keeps coming and disappearing, but I have to look into your question and make sure I answer your question. Okay, Elizabeth, hold that. I'm not going to ignore you, but it's just that there's so many comments coming down. But um, yes, I'm getting loads of bees. Let me tell you, how many of you before this session wouldn't have known this answer? If you think like, I know this now because I've gone through this session, type boss, right? Just type B-O-S-S. -S. If you think like, wow, I didn't know this, but during the session, boom, I know this answer, type boss. So the answer for that question is, boom, it is B, BNF page 119. And the BNF I refer to is the one I use, BNF 78, okay? We've got a few um, students, period students, Hosna, Hosna, um, that are from Northern Ireland and you guys have got your exam in August. Is that right, Hosna? If that's correct, if you're doing yours in Northern Ireland, Hosna, please just type in yes. But um, yeah, so those of you are doing in August, um, we'll make sure that we, speed things up for you and that we support you as much as we can so that you pass that in august why for the other students not doing it later in the year or next year we'll still be there for you okay so i've got a lot of buses great stuff so you guys ready for the next question if you're ready for question number two type in two type in two type in two type in two if you're ready for question number two type in two Okay, question number two starts now.
Okay, stop. Stop. So I made that a bit longer for a reason. That thing, you just need a bit of reading for that one. Oh, no. On YouTube, uh, three people broke the rules. Very disappointed. Re, no answer. Mora, please don't type your answers in. Please don't, don't, don't until I ask for them. So what is the answer, guys? What is your answer for that question? So I'm getting loads of Cs. Ashley say, Johnson says D. So I'm getting... Um, and Carol Kerr says E. All right. Interesting. Yeah, some people giving answers early. Please don't type your answers until I ask for it. Please, please don't. Not now, guys. Please, yeah, wait for instructions. That is part of your exam. If you don't follow instructions, believe me, you're going to fail your period exam. All right. So uh, I'm getting loads of Cs. I'm getting Ds as well. I'm getting Ds from me. Uh, D from Ashley Johnson. I'm getting E from Inkeruka. Right. Let's see what we have on the Facebook crew, the lovely Facebook crew. Facebook is going for Cs. Is there anyone on Facebook that's got anything different from C? So I'm getting loads of Cs, but I'm also getting Ds and Es. So the answer for this question, based on the notes, the answer for this question is, boom, it's C, all right? Be very careful. Those of you that put down E, it is not E because the INR is greater than 8, okay? If the INR was between 5 to 8, then yes, we'll go for E, all right? And those of you that put B, no, we don't refer them. That's not advice. The advice is stop warfarin, give um, oral phytominodione, restart warfarin when INR is less than five. That answer is on page 119 of your BNF. But majority of you got C, which means that you're doing well. So I'm going to ask you a question again. Is there any of you that got this correct, that you wouldn't have got you wouldn't have got this correct before but after this you actually nailed it because you went through this if you did put boss put boss put boss great and then we're going to go on to question number three so we've gone past um 9 30 i'm going to take your permission before i do anything do you guys want me to stop or do you want me to continue we have about two i think we've got five questions we either have five or six questions do you guys want me to continue i'm going to ask you i'm not just going to assume that you want me to if you want me to continue, please type continue, all right? And then we're going to continue. If you want me to stop here, I'm going to stop here, and then we can continue next session. Getting buses. Kate, Kate. Miriam Dallas says, yes, boss. Kate is boss. <laughs> Good stuff, Kate. And boss. Great. Share it. Continue. Okay, share it wants us to continue. We're going to respect share its decision, all right? And everyone on YouTube wants us to continue, so we're going to continue. Question number three, guys, let's get in. Question number three, I'm going to get that ready. I'm going to start my timer. Okay, and your question number three is now. Okay, stop. So I said to you, what I always do with the questions is I'll give you some questions on things that I teach you on here. And then there's some that I, I intentionally withhold from you because I just want to see if you guys know this stuff. And then I make sure that I teach you as well as we go on. So this is one of the questions I just want to find out. It's very important that you know about warfarin and surgery. Those of you on the course, you've got to know, you're going to know that. But um, I want to find out if you guys know. Very important as well to know how long a patient is to wait before they have elective surgery. So what answer did you guys get for that one? How are you? Amens. I've got amens on the amens on the course as well. Wow. How many of you are on the course? If you're on the course, can you just type, type down how you feel about the course? Like, what's the course? Give me one word to describe the course. Because we had about 200 students in the course, right? That's from October and January. Um, just type down in one, just one word to describe the course. What was your experience on the course? 
and you can still and we have an automated course so if you're interested you can still enroll on the course so some students had a life but we have the automated version that people like um amens i think hosna they all have automated the lovely kate has the automated version yeah i've got boom i'm bringing so many memories audrey says exciting camera guest says great great so um guys um what um very helpful amazing thank you for the feedback so what do you guys have what's your answer to that question what's your answer what's the answer c b a what do we have i've got a from temi i've got c from kimberly five days so I've got three days, I've got five days, I've got a few C's coming up, C's, C's. CJ says the course was amazing, thank you. Um, Justin says A, interesting. Let's go to the Facebook group. Nana says fantastic boom. <laughs> fantastic boom, that's a new word, I love it, I love it. I'll start using that word, Nana. Fantastic boom. So um, the answer to this is, um, let's see, C. Okay, it's five days. So what we call elective surgery, you guys know the difference between elective surgery. So elective surgery is surgery that has been booked in advance, okay? So it's like, I call it election. Like you think about elective, think about election day, you know when elections take place, you have to go and vote. So you know of it. So that's what we call elective surgery. While the other surgery is just an emergency. So if you're driving and you have an accident and you need an emergency surgery, that's an emergency surgery. Elective surgery is not, it's, you get a letter, it's booked a specific day, okay? That's why we said surgery in six months. So um, in this case, the answer is um, C, and that's page 119 of your BNF for reference. Okay. Someone's asking, Kirit is asking, does the same apply for dental treatments? Yes. So this is just generally what you advise patients, yeah, for dental treatments, because you want to prevent bleeding. Yes. Okay. So next question, you guys. Ready for next question? Type four. Type four. Let me make sure everyone is ready before I get to the next question. Type four. Give me a big four if you're ready for this wow the time is going fast isn't it 21 38 my gosh uma is like he's sending me messages already i've got a message from uma saying marvin make sure that everyone is in telegram group at 10 o'clock <laughs> all right all right all right let's do this okay you're getting forward so question number four starts oh let's set the timer let's set the timer all right question number four starts now and stop okay so what's your answer for that question question four what did you guys get so i'm getting a mix of answers i'm getting c and a from kevika says c catchy says oh no uh, mfa says c Kumbirai A, Ala C, Temi D, Audrey C. So I'm getting lots of C's and D's. Interesting, interesting. On Facebook, I'm getting B's, I'm getting C's and A's. Wow, I'm getting A, B, C in first on, from Facebook. Nana says B, Sherwood says A, Callum says A. Right, Helen says River Roxaban. Okay, so the answer is indeed. C, River Roxaban, River Roxaban. So 
very careful. So the question is saying six weeks following the hip replacement, Mr. Smith unfortunately had an ischemic stroke. He was rushed into hospital and treated within two hours of his stroke. He was discharged from the hospital a few days later. Which medication is the least, okay, the least recommended for long-term prevention of any recurrent strokes for Mr. Smith? So when we said that at the beginning, I said the least recommended um, for treating long-term is your anticoagulants. So anticoagulants only if they've got atrial fibrillation. You guys remember me saying that? If you remember me saying that type one, right? So with the anticoagulants, you use antiplatelets. Okay, so you always use the antiplatelets instead. But if that patient has atrial fibrillation, then you can use warfarin, you can use the other anticoagulants like rivaroxaban. So in this case, uh, Mr. Smith doesn't have AF, okay? And in this case, the only one that is an anticoagulant is rivaroxaban, and that's the least recommended for ischemic strokes. Good stuff. So we're going to go to the next question, and that might be the final question, or we might have one more question. Okay, are you guys ready for question number five? If you're ready for question number five, just type in five, type in five. Remember, you can always send us messages. If you're not clear about any of the questions, send us a message. Shall we says, atovastar N20 milligrams is only for a primary prevention, but it's, it's not 80 milligrams for secondary prevention. So um, we're going to go through that on the statins. But yes, um, normally atovastar N is used, statins are used for primary and secondary prevention. Okay, they're used for primary and secondary prevention. Atovastar N20 is what you call your high intensity. So you can use it for primary and you can use it for secondary. All right? Great, great, great. And the Simvastatin 18, I think, I think you're looking at Simvastatin 18 is some sort of equivalent. It's a high intensity statin as well, like at Silverstein 20. Okay, guys, are you guys ready for the fifth question? Type of five, if you're ready, type of five, type of five, you're ready for the next question. And your question starts. Now. and stop okay so what's your answer for this one this one's a bit of a tricky one <laughs> it is a bit tricky one because with your fast with your fast symptoms that's another test as well sometimes i said the gps will not just put just the fast they might put a few other things that you need to know when it comes to stroke so which one do you guys think is um the answer so I'm getting C's, I'm getting C's, a lot of C's, I'm getting D's, I'm getting A's. <laughs> Kyoke says A, I'm getting D from Prossi, I'm getting A from Joshni, and I'm getting C's, I'm getting D from Hosna. So what we got from Facebook, what we got, we've got Miriam says C, I'm getting lots of C's. Okay, um, C, 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 all right. Yeah, Kate says, oh God, I wouldn't go that high for secondary. Yes, definitely not. I know, definitely not. Atovastatin 80, that's insane. I think, I think what um, she was saying was, it's not Atovastatin 20, but I think it's the equivalent. I think she was looking at the high intensity, a Simvastatin 80 is a high intensity sign. That's what I assumed anyway. But guys, don't worry when we cover statins. Those are in the course, you've got access to all of that stuff to go all that information for you. But um, yeah, so what do you have C? So the majority of people putting down C and the answer indeed is C, okay? So the only one that is not a symptom of stroke is facial edema. I try to trap you guys in there by putting facial, and some people might think facial because we had face, so that's one of it, but no, not facial edema. We talk about your face dropping, but we don't talk about facial edema. 
All the other ones have indeed symptoms of stroke. So you could, they could be paralyzed, they could have dysphagia, can swallow, loss of consciousness, and blurred vision. I think that's the last question. Yes, that's it, guys. So thank you so much. Um, sorry that I went above time. Very sorry about that. And I've, I've, I've got like 10 million apologies to get to Uma. Guys, all of you on Telegram group, make sure that you jump on the Telegram group in the next 14 minutes for your answer for the amazing calculation question that Uma gave. Next week, we're going to um, go through hypertension. Also, absolutely important, make sure you don't miss this session. Because again, you get a lot of questions on hypertension. It is a key area for your exam. So whatever happens, don't miss this session. Don't miss the session next week. Um, subscribe to the channel, YouTube, so that you get notified when we're live. Um, like our page so that you get notification. And most importantly, share this with other pre-reg students so that they don't miss out. Share this with your colleagues. Share this with your friends. Get on the next week. Let us smash hypertension let me just bring that off so i can um see some of your comments i'll stop sharing now and yes so i'm now on your screen you guys can see me i'm on a different screen now i can see all your comments now thank you so much to all of you attended today thank you for giving me your time thank you so much all the best we got about 128 people watching which is great um all the best guys stay positive we're here to help you if you're interested in joining the course um, you can still join the course and you have access to all these resources and you have access to the Telegram group and the Telegram group is filled with so much resources. You've got links, you've got questions and every single day, Uma and I make sure that we give questions to motivate you, we put things going on. So we're excited and we just want to see you succeed. So thank you so much. Have a brilliant evening. See you all at the Telegram group or we'll make, look forward to all of you next week. Hypertension. We're going to do this, guys. We're going to do this. We're going to smash this exam. We're going to become pharmacists. Take care and see you all soon. Bye.